Okay, so final lecture today, and uh, this uh, was supposed to be something else, but it's not. It's going to be Pokemon Go, which is same thing that I was teaching in in last years as well. And the main reason for that is because I have. Um, <coughs> installed uh, Harry Potter Wizards Unite I believe in the summertime and uh, since then I haven't used it anymore but uh, yesterday okay now amazingly it works <laughs> but yesterday it stayed on the loading screen for half an hour and uh, I didn't plan to do screenshots from the app for more than half an hour. So after that half an hour ended, I just probably left it on on my phone and I had to move on to some other tasks. So I didn't have time to, to make new slides on this other application, but I will talk a little bit about it, just brief observations and uh, yeah. But um, <clears throat> Today we talk about this one, which in my opinion is even more famous. It, it is the first location-based game that actually became popular in my opinion. And um, <coughs> we will see again in my opinion, so it's a quite subjective thing, but we'll try to figure out the reasons why it became so popular. So what it is? If you consider it very, very uh, strict definition, it's some kind of navigation app. It uses a map, it shows you some, some target, and you have to somehow reach the target, whatever it is, real target or artificial target, using the map and the information that you see on the screen. Now it has some kind of nice nice features here that we will get into and without these features it would be quite boring and it would not even have the Pokemon uh, theme like uh, if you take away the, the visuals from here then it's just markers on the map and maybe not as motivating to play so in this case the franchise is probably one of the reasons why this application became really popular um, many people knew what it is, or many people have kids who knew what it is. They installed it because why not? <coughs> but because of this franchise, they knew what to expect even without installing the app in the first time. Of course, maybe they wouldn't get all the details of how the game works, but um, Think about it, this game almost doesn't need a tutorial because if you're familiar with the franchise you can imagine that you're gonna move around and see some things there and obtain them somehow, some creatures. Now it looks quite different depending on many things. It uses a weather uh, API as well, similar to what some of you did in your project works. Depending on how the weather is outside, uh, the map is styled slightly differently. Small feature, but uh, anyway, I think that many people say, hey, it's snowing outside and it's snowing in my game. Kind of cool. Uh, not necessarily the most important feature of the game, but uh, it is something that is there for a reason that uh, developers decided to do to add it there. And it's not easy to make custom themes for all weather conditions. So they probably allocated some, some time for that. This is, by the way, something that wasn't there from the beginning. It's a feature that appeared uh, more or less halfway to in its popularity streak, streak. So Pokemon Go started increasing popularity quite rapidly, then stagnated a little bit and then started to decline. 
but I think people are still using it nowadays, but I think also that this kind of hype is, is over for a long time already. Then you have the possibility to cost customize the interface even more because your location is not just a marker, it's a, it's a character, it's an animated 3D model and it can be made to look like you or like somebody who you like. So it's more or less, in, in my opinion, it's, it's this combination now of the dress-up games which are also a, a thing, so usually smaller kids um, play those kind of games, but the idea is the same that what you do with dolls, but in, in virtual environment. The thing is, you get more attached to the game when your character is not just a pinpoint marker, and you get even more attached when the character is something you like looking at. So. They didn't have to do this at all. If they wanted to have the 3D character, then fine. But they could have used maybe maybe Ash or some kind of uh, character from the series. People would have probably liked it. But when you had this personalization effect there, it, uh, it two two things may happen. First is. Uh, People get more attached, but it also has this opportunity to ask money for different types of uh, special clothing that maybe only you have. I have to say I'm not sure if they did it, but uh, I believe I've seen this feature at some point. Even if it's not there, it could be there. So uh, this is now speculating what this could be useful for in your applications. So small thing, but. If only you have some special hat, then uh, you're very cool. <clears throat> okay. Then one of the things that I believe is the is the a big reason reason for its popularity is this uh, collecting motif. So it's a game where you collect things. There are many things, many games that do this. This geocaching game is very, very popular. It's a game where there are real objects hidden in the, in the world and you use a mobile app or some GPS sensor to find them, maybe change something there and then, or leave a message for the next person and, uh, and move on to find another thing. It's a really popular game. I've seen, uh, I know at least, well, roughly 10 people that are playing it. But uh, in this one, you don't need a physical object, really. You just go and find these, uh, these creatures spread around the map in different locations. That means that you can have more. That means that you can have them in places where you don't have many people. For example, um, something they didn't do well at the beginning, but they could. Um, remote places where nobody is playing, villages, maybe a thousand people or less. They had less interesting things to do there. But the Pokémon were easy to generate everywhere. So they did have something, have something for everyone, but maybe they didn't have the more professional, the more sophisticated features like the Pokéstops or these gyms or whatever, causing people to go to, to need to travel <laughs> if they want to, to get good at the game. And it's not nice thinking that, okay, I'm a, maybe school kid and uh, I have this game but all I see are Pokemon that all look like this because of uh, whatever lack of geographical content. So uh, the Pokemon were, were varying also depending on where you are. Like if you're close to the sea maybe you have more water type Pokemon in your area. If you're close to the maybe in a village you have rodents everywhere. <laughs> I, I don't know. But in general, um, 
in places that are not so populated, there was le there were less things to do, and that was a problem. But at least you can always find something more. And um, this collection would constantly grow, so you don't really lose anything. In a sense, that means that time time playing correlates with your collection growing. So. If you like collecting, if this collecting motif is something that, that uh, intrigues you, playing the game, just keeping it open and, and the next opportunity of collecting something just adds to this collection. It doesn't necessarily maybe fill in some, some gap that you can only get by traveling, but you still get more Pokemon of the same type, or, uh, or some bonuses, or, or whatever. So this is, uh, I think, one, one of the main reasons. All the time you keep the game on, you have the opportunity to get better in this aspect, and you never get worse at it. So it has some kind of psychological effect that people like keeping the game on and using every opportunity. People have bought power supplies, because the battery was running out only for this game. I, I know two guys who bought power banks because they wanted to play this game so much. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, that they didn't really care that uh, it's a deficiency that it uses so much battery power. They just went went around the issue and. Uh, bought more hardware to support it. This has been happening before Pokemon Go, actually, with another game called Ingress. I'm not sure if you have heard about it. It's made by the same company. It was a hit, if you consider it uh, in the scope of location-based games. I knew maybe two people playing it. In my opinion, this is a hit. <laughs> um, what they did, what that game was, it was more or less about conquering territories or, or something like that. I'm not, I haven't played it myself. Yeah, and um, they did something really smart there. They used the locations where people were active. They used the locations where people were conquering and, and meeting quite often. And that's what became the gyms and Pokestops in Pokemon game. Because you have to also think that when you begin this building of this, of this location-based game, where do you put the things? Where will you put the interesting locations? Is it going to be in big cities? Is it going to be at uh, historical monuments? Maybe, uh, I don't know, but if you already know where people tend to meet, then that's going to be probably the best guess to, the best guess to put these, uh, these meeting places. So these gyms and uh, are locations where people have to meet at the same time or, uh, or anyway often and battle or do some kind of uh, other interactions there. So it's not just about the collection motif, it's about more than that, they added, added more features and they had data to begin with where to put these, these things. Pokemon can spawn anywhere and they spawn with, uh, with these properties like are they water type or forest type or whatever, but these gyms are more important. They are places where more people have to collect to, to be together. And, uh, these, this is the main reason why people that live in small towns complain that we don't have any gym. <laughs> or, or, yeah. Okay. When you collect one of these items, you get plenty of uh, of statistics about this this. Uh, Pokemon, like it's a battle power or something that you can use to, to combat other people. Um, and then different properties of, of it and 
it can evolve under some certain conditions and become even better. It's not really how evolution works, but uh, it works in this world. <coughs> it has the option to have augmented reality there, and many people loved it. It was like instant instant attraction for it, even though for me, it, I mean, when I played the game, I played it maybe a month or so. Um, it was nothing appealing because I just knew it's a different background there. Otherwise, the mechanics were very, very similar. And the different background also means it's going to use more of my battery. Like uh, if the camera is on at the same time. So for me, there was no difference here, but I have to say many people loved this, loved the augmented reality feature. Um, the week it came out, I was in, in the US actually, so, so hi, said. <laughs> and uh, I was in, in the US and I was maybe in, um, in Dallas, Texas. And I was at the hotel and uh, re a registration de desk there. And people were, I mean, some people were taking my, my credentials, but uh, other people in the background were like, hey, do you have this Pokemon app? What is this? What's that? You don't know what Pokemon is? Well, it's something like a kid's TV show or whatever. No, no, now it's, the, now it's like real. Check out, uh, John has a, a Pokemon on his desk. Look, look, look through my phone or, or whatever. And uh, people were, were really like uh, excited about this feature that they can show something on top of the real world there and, and interact with it. Even though it wasn't like perfect, it could go, uh, it could go through objects somehow or, um, or the, angle would not be perfectly consistent, it still gave the impression quite well. So, again, one of the main, main issues, main reasons why it became really popular. But then, <coughs> uh, okay, so then every time you encounter this, you have a chance to collect the, the Pokemon. If you win a mini game, so we had before this dress up component, but the second mini game is actually this one. Uh, it's a game built for originally, I guess, for iOS, but many variants were there um, for the web. You can just play them with your mouse, but uh, it gained popularity very much the same as, as Angry Birds did when. Uh, <coughs> when touch devices became strong enough, uh, sensitive enough to have very, very nice, smooth, smooth control and be able to throw a paper ball into a basket, which apparently is, really a, is a really nice thing to do because it got quite many downloads even though it doesn't have a brand name like Pokemon associated with it. So I, I'm guessing what, what Niantic did is that, okay, look at this game, you throw a ball in a basket, how about you throw it at the, at the object that also moves a little bit. This game had also improved versions where wind was becoming a factor, so then you have to also account for wind. In this Pokemon, you account for the Pokemon moving. It doesn't stand still. And if you throw correctly, you, you catch the Pokemon with some kind of probability. And then there are multiple ball types, and uh, you may even pay for a good ball that <laughs> has a higher chance of hitting the target or, or whatever. You can also use some kind of things to slow down the Pokemon. So again, this kind of purchasing opportunity comes if you don't just find these resources laying around. But um, 
Yeah, this is it more or less. Uh, in my opinion, it's it's the main game mechanic, apart from the navigation aspect previously. Why this game became really popular, in my opinion, it's quite simple. Uh, if I were to now toss a paper there in that basket, I have to get up, well now I'm up, but then I have to take the paper back if I want to throw it again. It's nice to throw it first time, but uh, <laughs> I have to go back and whatever. In the mobile app, the ball would just disappear and teleport back in my hand. So it's some, some game mechanic that is better than real world, and um, it's fun to play. But yeah, so many other things mentioned these in-app purchases. When you go to gym, you have these opportunities to interact with other people or combat or uh, evolve your Pokemon hatching. There are many, many other features and they continue to add all the time. They have these events where new Pokemon are released into the database and then everybody is really excited when some powerful Pokemon appears. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't really played that much. But um, I don't think that this is uh, I think Pokemon would have been uh, a hit even without these, but of course these are keeping people and uh, grouping people together, so it's quite quite important uh, as well. But yeah, so this is more like a, like Final Fantasy style style of game aspects here. So now the discussion time. <coughs> Uh, so these are some opinions again why why I think it's a hit and uh, it's really easy to play like you just walk around and every time you you encounter a Pokemon you do this throwing thing there and hope for success a popular franchise so even without reading instructions or watching tutorials or, or watching other people play, you have a good guess of what the game is going to be like. And finally, and I think that this is probably the most important reason it gained worldwide popularity quickly, is because of problems. And this may not be apparent, but uh, hear me out. So there were many issues with, with this game really, really big issues, like uh, people's safety, um, there have been different muggings, there are even record video recordings on YouTube where people are playing the game and then they are going in some alley or whatever because other people are luring them with some kind of, kind of things there and then they steal their phone or whatever. So these kind of things actually happen. Then you have accidents, people that look at their phone all the time and um, maybe run into traffic or fall off a bridge or, or whatever. There have been these, these kind of incidents. Um, yeah, I don't know, child safety, uh, neighborhoods that became very uh, crowded after this, this game popped out or loud, then uh, many things appeared, like people finding a dead body with a Pokemon on it. <laughs> Very strange things were, were happening with, with, uh, with this game. Um, but these issues, these problems, and even the one I mentioned before, not enough data in rural areas or, or whatever, all of these were reasons for people to complain to notice and they were free advertisement for the platform because it appeared on all the news channels these things and uh, when you watch such a news you don't think that oh I'm gonna if I install this game I'm gonna fall off a bridge 
You don't think that. You just think, oh, there's a Pokemon game nowadays. So, so it was uh, because of the issues. Like, if it would have been just perfect and, and no no problems there, it probably wouldn't have received so much attention from the media. And I think that it would not have spread like like wildfire. And. Um, yeah, so I actually think that the issues with the game were the reason it became so viral so quickly. It, it got free advertisement, which is something you, you don't really get with any other, uh, at least well, you get with other, other software. But this one had really serious things related to location and people's safety. Of course, if you compare with other software like, like Facebook or, or whatever, like Mark Zuckerberg is always in, often in court and often has to explain different, different privacy uh, laws or, or, or decisions that their, their firm is doing. And those also receive quite much attention, especially sometimes. But here you had dead people, muggings, and, and it's quite an impact, it, it goes everywhere. And it's, of course, marketed even as a, as a game for kids. So it does receive free attention very, very easily. So this is actually all I have to say about Pokemon Go. But um, I did plan to do this Wizards Unite thing as well as a comparison. So unfortunately, I can't, um, I don't have slides on the topic, but uh, I could, well, there is a website. And uh, I can say that uh, the website has this trailer there. And this trailer that you see there, <coughs> which you can click that button to, to have it full, is nothing like the game. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the trailer was really nice and like. The trailer was like, wow, <laughs> this looks like um, like these new movies from, from the franchise, these uh, fantastic beasts uh, and where to find them. And, yeah, first one was good, the second one not that great. <laughs> but anyway, um, trailer looked amazing, like, wow, if it's going to look like that, it's, it's going to be bigger than, than Pokemon. But I installed it and I played a little bit, and it's Pokemon. In my opinion, it's the same game. It's the same game, the same map, same map, uh, map kind of uh, like flat map, no buildings, um, same rendering system there. You again find things on the map and you interact with them. You don't throw now balls but you cast spells. And casting spells is, um, well, uh, some of you actually took this VVB course as well, and in, in some point we had this uh, drawing in front of the, of the camera thing. Mm -hmm. I think maybe you implemented some, uh, something that you can draw some specific shapes. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's almost worse. Almost worth. <laughs> but anyway, so you have to more or less, instead of throw a ball, follow some kind of, some kind of pattern. And uh, if you follow it successfully, you cast the spell successfully. But more or less, this interaction is added and replaces this ball throwing, throwing mechanism. Characters, of course, are from this other franchise, so uh, that's my opinion what, what happened here, is that 
they hoped that they can use the same mechanics or similar mechanics with minimal effort, but uh, switching to a new franchise will will do the trick, more or less. So I think that that is the, the lesson somehow that if you have something good, you may repurpose it. You may repurpose it for some other other kind of uh, thing instead. When we built this wind uh, wind routing system, I, I think that some of the components there could be used to make these other applications. Like, uh, so now it just shows you how much wind is on the route, but you can make it do the routing, like tell you what is the optimum way to go to a location without you having to try and uh, all kind of possibilities. Or you can have it this recommendation system, like uh, let's say you want to go running or you want to go cycling somewhere, and how can you minimize what track near you minimizes the wind or has tailwind or, or things like that. So the components that were built during the, the class could be repurposed to make completely different applications instead. And I think that's what they did here. They hoped for, for the same kind of popularity, but I, I don't think it happened. And I think that this one is much more demanding on uh, bandwidth, on uh, memory in your phone, and it loads much slower. It took 30 minutes yesterday, and it was still on that loading screen. Uh, it could be because I didn't uh, try it for a long time, but there was no update pending. So whatever updates happened, happened automatically on my phone. And uh, then after all this time, it still decided to load something in the background, most likely some uh, online resources or whatever. So the, the visuals, like uh, the characters from the series that appear in, in this game, they are much higher quality than uh, the Pokemon characters. Like they have much more polygons, they have much more vertices, they have a more complex animation and I I haven't done like really assessment but I think that this uses more resources like uh, memory space processor power than Pokemon Go does. It's uh, it's nothing clear but yeah. So it's a copy of it, in my, in my opinion. Now, I'm also curious to hear what you guys think about, about these, um, these location-based games. Like, do you think I got most of the reasons, or the main ones? Or do you think that there is some other reason why they became popular? Yeah, for Pokemon Go, that's obvious. It was about the friendships. Mm -hmm. And also, yeah, it was really mediatized because of the problems. But that's also because, um, for the moment, I think we didn't have any game uh, about Pokemon on smartphone. So that was also the first one. I don't know about that. It could be, but uh, then again, Pokemon had a very long history of mobile games. Yeah. But, I, I, but they were on consoles. Or yeah, yeah, I think it's that's a thing. Yeah. yeah, it could be that uh, there were no, game on smart, uh, no games on smartphones, but we need to double check that. But the fact that it uses your location is definitely, definitely something. Um, yeah, anything else? I would say the few aspects of the features were had this sort of addictive um, mm -hmm. vibes to it, mostly uh, the fact that you, if you run out of the Pokeballs or whatever, you need to go around, spin those Pokestops, if you don't want to pay for it, because there's, there's a lot of people who just won't pay for it, like myself for instance, because I find it like, eh, 
when I used to play it. I think lot. I've never paid for any yeah, exactly. game feature in my life. Okay. Also, the thing when you said uh, that it really doesn't require tutorial. Uh, when it first came out, my friend started playing it, and I, I had an old, old phone, like it was Samsung Galaxy S3 Mini, so it couldn't run the game properly, but it still like managed to do something. And I remember we were playing, and when we came to Poké so we didn't know we are supposed to spin it. Ah, okay. So, so we had no idea how to collect the Pokéballs, and then someone like, hey, did you supposed to spin it? I'm like, no way, no. <laughs> But you know, this is something. I mean, um, this word spreading. Uh, I mean, it also accounts for tutorials in a way. Mm -hmm. Before, when there were old Nintendo games or even um, even old board games or whatever, people were just talking. Like it's like this. Here. Yeah. It's like that. Here. And this happened with your friends. Mm -hmm it would not maybe happen with some other type of game nowadays. So this became such a huge hit that even that um, even that accounted for no need of, of tutorials. Mm. People were just actively talking about yeah. it. It had a strong community sense. Yeah. How about the... the okay. When you said they have to go and uh, do that boring thing for spinning the Poké shop to get the pokeballs. Well, I wouldn't say really it's boring because it's again sort of a surprise mechanic because you don't know what can fall out of the poke shop. Like sometimes rare items may drop, and it's like ah, I may want to go there and try. Like maybe I will get this rare item or something. So it's like a roulette, sort of like a gambling. Yeah, if you if you think about it like that, it sort of is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. How about the fact that you actually walk there? or cycle there, or drive there? Well, I think some people, like some people got a lot of value out of that, that otherwise would not go out and move around. So I would say it helped, a few people's health at least a bit. Yeah, this is arguable. Um, there are research papers already out claiming that it helped, like if you search research papers with Pokemon keywords, you will find research papers on Pokemon where people analyze uh, health benefits or whatever. But um, it's really hard to say because mm -hmm. what people are doing, they are analyzing maybe time spent outdoors or time spent mm -hmm. walking and they do assume some kind of correlation with the health, health benefits. But to really know that this game helps your health, it needs years of, of controlled think, studies. Yeah, and, I think it's more related to people who would not go out otherwise. Yeah. And the people who were already taking walks or moving around, I don't think it really changes that much for those. Yeah. I would say it might uh, be even a bit worse because like, you have your phone and you're like this all the time, so it could do something to your spine or something, I don't know. You may be hit by a truck. <laughs> oh, <that. laughs> well, this is a thing. Both Pokemon and the Harry Potter uh, series do have big text during loading screen and somehow sometimes appearing saying things like uh, so watch your surroundings. Or, yeah, like constantly be aware of your surroundings. Blah blah blah. I haven't checked these uh, terms of agreement, but I guess. They do say that if something happens, not our fault. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I do think that. Men yes. No, I was just. Uh, if you want to know uh, one thing that would also make it popular is that you can play with your friends in a way. That often mm -hmm. you play mobile games just alone. Yeah. But in Pokemon Go, you can go with your friends and somebody sees Pokemon mm -hmm. and says, hey, here's Pokemon, and you go as a group and find Pokemon. Mm -hmm. And uh, at least that's what happened with my friends. <laughs> um, and some of them still play it together. Yeah. So, uh, and so also, yeah. Except, uh, especially for the gyms and the raids, like you can go together and fight together mm -hmm. with your friends. like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so on. So I think that's yeah, yeah. In my whole town, they have like 
WhatsApp group for uh, going to the gyms together. <laughs> they organize raids. <laughs> okay, wow, serious. <laughs> yeah. So they organize. Uh, okay. Yeah. This social aspect is, is, I think it's important. So games, I think mobile games, there used to be multiplayer mobile games that you can, uh, there are, that you can play with other people, the same as the multiplayer games that you can play on PC. But uh, this one had these constraints that you actually need to socialize to some extent. And I think that people also got some good, good feeling that they socialize more. And maybe talk also about something while doing the raids or <laughs> while catching Pokemon, and uh, it enhances the overall feeling good about what they are doing at the moment. They are not just wasting their time. They are moving. They have a reason for moving. This is something that many people don't do otherwise. Like if they don't uh, have a reason to go walking, they sit thing on the couch. They need to force themselves to have a reason, maybe go to the shop or, or whatever, but uh, many people don't, don't consider exercise as a priority. But if they do it, they do consider it to some extent as an achievement, uh, at least maybe subconsciously, or this is my, my opinion. Like, if they catch some kind of Pokemon while doing it, it's even added, added bonus there. But uh, they feel like they did something. And if they can socialize at the same time, then doing something even more. So they see it as not uh, necessarily spending their time for no good reason. They start to see good, good things coming out of it. Yeah. There are many things that, that uh, affected this to, to some extent. And because there are so many things and so many different things, it, uh, it attracts larger target audience. Like people who watch the news <laughs> all, all the time. I don't watch the news, but they hear about it uh, from there. People who do like to, to, to socialize more get the benefits from there. Even now, when I go out of my, my home, I, I know there is a pocket stop there, and I often see people just sitting there. <laughs> something like that. When there are the community day events, we, we, I've been to like the big park in our city, like there's a big central park in the middle of the city, and you could see all age like groups of people, you could see like grandparents with their grandchildren, all of them playing Pokemon Go. Like so, different age groups, like grandparents, grandchildren. Yeah, it was it was great. Like you, you could see old couples with the power banks. You could see the cable from their pocket, and they were all playing Pokemon Go. Yeah, I don't know if they really connected with the with. The, franchise or with the game itself, but I think that they enjoyed the social aspect of mm -hmm. it. Maybe. I mean, in the past, people just used to get together and stay in a park on benches, talk. It's something that isn't happening anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, when, when I was small, it would be like, you go to the park. Of course, I was small, so there was a reason to go to the park, but... Uh, <laughs> But uh, when we go there, we synchronized with other neighbors, other people, and then all, all the like adults were talking, kids were playing. Uh, this, this kind of thing started happening again, but with the phone in your hand at the same time. I mean, it's not exactly the same thing, but it gives you more reason for, for doing it. Yeah. I think they, they did a great job with it. Of course, the problems aside, <laughs> like those, those issues. But, uh, I actually had a presentation maybe two years before it came out, and uh, we were talking about Mopsy or Mopsy, these things, and somehow moving a step ahead. And uh, in my presentation, I was saying things like, 
there needs to be an RPG, there need to be creatures out there, and uh, you need to combat them, and you could see them on camera, and whatever. And then after it appeared, uh, uh, Passy was like, why did you do it? <laughs> Something like that. But it's not possible. I mean, it, it's maybe possible, but very difficult, because uh, franchise issues, so you need to get rights for it. Yeah. And, uh, I didn't think about Pokemon Go, but there used to be this game called uh, Gothic that I played at some point. And I think that that one had, would, would work as well. Of course, it has a less popular franchise. But uh, that's, that's what I, I was presenting. So uh, more or less modeling this uh, Gothic world in outdoors. Have beasts there and things that you have to withdraw them and so on. So the presentation was more or less this kind of how fan Final Fantasy would be in a, in a location based setting. But uh, the main reason why people said it's bad is because it would need some kind of story, storytelling, storyline, and uh, once it's over, it's over. And um, you need people employed to design new stories to, to, to make it interesting. So in that one, there was some objective that you have to, to achieve. And uh, here, much easier. It's just this cumulate things. So just get higher score and higher score. But you don't really become like the best Pokemon player in the world. Or, or save the world or <laughs> something like that by, in, in this game. So. This is also one, one benefit here. It's just about self-improvement in, in a way, and uh, no need to worry about RPG elements. But uh, I think many people thought about Pokemon Go. I mean, in my example, I just thought about something similar, but I think many people thought about Pokemon. And, uh, and I think when it came out, some people may even have thought like about time because it's all fitting. The, the, whole, the whole series uh, franchise is about discovering the world and, and moving and finding places and finding things in the world. And now you can have these augmented uh, characters there. And yeah, And these Exer games also gained popularity recently before Pokemon Go for the same reasons we spoke before this presumably health benefits. So even if your friend tells you, hey, try it out, at least you go out more, then you may install it even without, uh, even without necessarily liking the franchise. But uh, what I find interesting is that it makes people do very silly things, including myself. Like you go there and then you're like... This, and if you stop and think about this, that's how you look like outside <laughs> when people are watching. And you don't mind, you're so preoccupied by the game, so hooking. <laughs> that that, that you, you do that and it's okay. <laughs> I mean, what other app made you do that before Pokemon Go? Yeah, that's more a thing about augmented reality than Pokemon. Because that's the same when you're playing virtual reality. You're with like HTC Vive doing some random movement for anybody else. Yeah, but you, you have that, uh, that thing on your head and it's clear that you don't see anything else. But, uh, okay. It, it does look funny, but it's clear that that guy is in his own world somehow. He cannot see anything, so... But, yeah, I mean, okay, there were some other apps that make you do weird things in public, like, uh, like even your phone, if it asks you to uh, recalibrate the compass sensor, you have to do this... <laughs> if you do this in public, it's like, what are you doing if you don't know that this is happening? <coughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah, 
yeah, it's the augmented reality part, but even in this mode where you don't have the, that thing, you still had to do that. So it's not because of augmented reality, it's because the game was relying on this uh, compass sensor as well. So the, the controls of your phone were not just touching the screen. I lied a little bit, so touching the screen were only in the, in the paper toss game, but now in, in this one, you have to also orient yourself. So they did do some thinking there. But uh, I don't know, do you think it had an impact? I mean, could it be that you just have to do that and it's enough? Or uh, the fact that it also goes out of the screen maybe became more interesting? You have to speed around like that. <laughs> I for, at least for me and people that I know, my friends generally who were playing it a lot, they said that the AR mode is quite annoying mm -hmm. because uh, it's sometimes really hard to, because at least in the first screenshot you can see its, its shadow is way beyond it. And it's it's nice. Sometimes... <laughs> It's sitting on this branch. Oh. Can't you see? <laughs> <laughs> it's obvious. <laughs> yes. Uh, so for these kind of reasons, it was sometimes hard to like place uh, the distance mm -hmm. you have from the Pokemon. So it, because you can't really, you don't have the sense of scale. Okay. So it was sometimes really difficult to actually like make the shots. I believe that the shadow actually should help with the sense of scale to some extent. It should, but... Mm -hmm. all, all I can say is that when application gets as final as this one and, uh, and as popular as this one, I mean, not necessarily as popular, but um, all the things that they added here were added for a reason. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's not the best reason, but um, they were. And even this spinning around was added for a reason, not just to make people look silly, because this would actually be a bad reason. Mm. It would be a reason why you wouldn't have people play the game. I mean, you wouldn't include because maybe people think it looks silly and they uninstall the game. But, yeah, so okay, the distance thing, I agree. You don't know how big this is supposed to be, this creature. Is it like this uh, Peter Pan, Tinkerbell thing? <laughs> that this is a small, small thing there, or is it some giant thing but farther away in the, in the distance and then it's just drawn on top of the tree because it's a crappy augmented reality system that doesn't detect the tree there to put it behind it. <laughs> so th these kind of mm -hmm. things can, can be. Uh, how does it relate to the size of this guy? But uh, I believe that through playing, people figured out that, okay, they are supposed to be about the same distance from you always. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of, of that. And then your mind somehow makes a map of uh, how big each of the things is supposed to be. Uh, only the guys that made it and maybe track what people see and what mm -hmm people interact know more about this stuff, but uh, yeah, many, many small, small things are, uh, can have an impact. Uh, it's hard to say if making the people do these silly things was a bad thing or a good thing. In a sense, it's again free advertising. It sounds silly maybe, but uh, think about it. Um, if you wouldn't spin, and somebody who holds your phone, his phone and does this can do anything. Can scroll through emails. But if that person is doing that while scrolling through emails, then that guy is playing Pokemon Go. And if you know that that is happening in Pokemon Go, because somebody told you or you tried the game yourself, you just got a reminder that, hey, you have the app installed, take it up. It, it's again this kind of, could it be that they planned for it? Would this be one of the reasons? 
hard to say, but uh, but I know if somebody does these silly things that it's probably one of those games. And most likely Pokemon Go. I think in Harry Potter you don't do that. I'm not sure. Or, or oh, no, no, you do. You do. Yeah, I, I tried it just briefly in the summertime. So you do have to speak about it. So yeah. Um, Sometimes these, these small features that, if you don't stand to analyze, like why is that there, it, it can appear as a no reason or maybe even a bad reason to have the feature in the first place. But if you look at it from other points of view, good reasons can appear, especially from them as developers. Would you do something differently if you would make such a game? Do you have some kind of vision for what else could work as a as a location-based game that isn't yet popular or existing even? The idea from the other guys uh, for some project about a zone which is getting smaller and smaller could be nice, like with uh, some Fortnite mm -hmm. advertisement. I know a little bit what Fortnite is. <laughs> I, I don't play, it, but um, this kind of battle royale uh, yeah. concept, yeah. And then the other guys that had this dark, dark theme with the circle that uh, you discover the world. That one is uh, somehow inspired from strategy games like uh, Warcraft or Starcraft. Or this. Like uh, you don't know how the map looks like and what is there, but you. You have to discover the entire region. <coughs> there are different ideas, and some of them could be. So, uh, but this Fortnite. How about having having Fortnite as a as a location based game? Yeah, yeah. The thing about Fortnite is more about like it's really known. It's something as Pokemon could be. Fortnite Go. Yeah, or me, people me. like that could result in <laughs> actual violence, maybe. <laughs> like, you see someone playing uh, in the team against you across the road, and hey, <laughs> you there, <laughs> come here. <laughs> you just killed me. Uh -huh. oh, yeah. I, I hope it wouldn't result in people doing stupid things. Like, <laughs> yeah, I know yeah. you can sometimes <laughs> jump on buildings, or, or I've seen some trailers of the game. Or like parachute or whatever. If you need to get down somehow really quickly from your balcony, don't <laughs> just be going crazy. Just be patient. You may, if you're, if you know Fortnite, and then you, you get this game. Maybe you get crazy ideas like I can do this. Oops, sorry. <laughs> anyway, yeah. I think many things could be adapted, but. Uh, and again, franchise is important. Like, uh, even if you make a really good game, like what uh, what some of you did in the projects here, how do you promote it? And and even if some people hear about it, what would make them share it with other people and uh, somehow learn from Pokemon Go this kind of uh, user influential features? Yeah, you must either have a really good gameplay or... Good uh, gameplay. I would say it really needs to have a little bit of that addictive uh, gambling sort of um, aspect to it. So it keeps Maybe. you playing the game. Maybe. Some guys, in, in the course, had these things like the this gold miner game or uh, mm -hmm. even the guys with the map that were uh, that you couldn't see all the map in the beginning. Yet. Yeah. Also, maybe the whatever franchise you use, it should be at least popular, so people at least take the effort to go look at the application in the App Store or whatever. Like, hey, this could be like, uh, let's say Marvel or whatever. Like, you're, hey, this could be interesting. 
mm -hmm. because if you try to create a franchise, it's going to be a long like a popularity curve. If people don't know about it, like you create something your of your own. If it's not popular, it might take a while for people to actually like notice it. Yeah, but of course, if it's something popular, then the rights issues. Yeah, uh, that's it. Uh, yeah. Like when you pay for the rights, then usually not cheap. <laughs> and if you are a starter guy, then you don't have money. Mm -hmm. So I kind of take it off the table already in the beginning. Mm -hmm. but, uh, you can't really use well franchises. You could obviously spend money on promotion, but that's again another aspect with the financial aspect of the advertisement or whatever. I think loose, loose relation, uh, somehow loosely relating to some some franchise could work. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry. Some spin on. Promoting yourself, in my observations, not experience because I never really tried, but uh, promoting yourself is like you spend some money or effort to share links in different places and uh, after you spend it, they don't really spread anymore. Like, uh, they, they may spread then when you are sharing it for one more, one more day, two more days. And uh, then it stops. You have to do it again, and again, and again. I think if it's something really, really great, then uh, it would start to spread. But uh, so far, I've never experienced this. No. Okay. Anyway, I think we can probably end soon. This is a uh, I, we didn't have a break and not so much more to, to talk about this. Of course, we can talk about different aspects, but the uh, main, main thing I wanted to point out is how to analyze some of the things. So when you have a popular application, try to figure out why it's popular. Is it something that you can use in your own apps? That it could, could help you in the same way. Franchise is definitely one of the things that may be the main thing why this became popular and started spreading. And the media thing as well. Yeah. But the media wouldn't have happened if the franchise wouldn't be there. Like it was a kind of combo. A combo, yeah. So franchise made many people try it in the beginning and then the media started showing complaints. So. Mm. All right. Well, that's about it.